Hello, humans. All right, so somebody wrote and said, Jesus literally says we are all gods, but he also says we are all sons and daughters of God. Hmm. Now, where did Jesus say that we are all gods? Well, most people point to John 10, 34 to 35. But does this mean that humans can become gods as Mormons, Hindus, and New Agers claim? No. In proper context, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And the Jews wanted to stone Jesus because he made himself equal with God. Jesus responded by quoting Psalm 82, 6, which addresses leaders and judges who judged unjustly. Psalm 82 highlights the fact that those in power have no real power. The word gods is the English translation of that Hebrew word Elohim. And that word most commonly does refer to God as we see in Genesis 1.1. But it can also refer to angels. It can also refer to fake pagan deities. Or even humans such as kings or judges or a leader like Moses. So cross-reference Psalm 58 verse 1 and see how it describes human rulers. And also Psalm 97, 7, where it describes in its rhetorical climax the condemnation of idolaters, where the gods who are the object of people's worship in turn must worship the one true God, because there is only one true God. These idols are false gods and only exist in the minds of those who worship them, even though they're merely pieces of wood, stone, or metal. Now, in the context of Psalm 82, it is referring to human leaders and judges who were not actually gods. Psalm 82 verse 7 even says, Nevertheless, you will die like men. Uh, newsflash, the true God does not die. So, Jesus pointed out that like the unjust judges of Psalm 82, the Jewish leaders were wrong. Um, the true God cannot be mistaken. The title of gods is not addressed to everyone, but only to the judges about whom Jesus said are those to whom the word of God came. Now, Jesus was showing that if the Old Testament scriptures could give some divine status to divinely appointed judges, why should they find it incredible that he should call himself the Son of God? And even if we're all gods because we are children of God, they still had no right to be angry at Jesus for saying he is the Son of God. But this is the point. While the Pharisees claimed to be children of God, Jesus told them they were children of the devil. So, are they gods? Hmm. Now, if there's no other gods before or after the one true God, as it is written in Scripture, how can humans ever become true gods? Christians will indeed be glorified in heaven, but none of us can ever become true gods by the very definition. Thus, Jesus was giving a defense for his own deity, not for the deification of man. Jesus is God, and he defended his divine authority as the word of God. Uh, he became, the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. So, in response to this, though, a modern-day Pharisee wrote to me and said, In your proper persona, you are not a human being. You are a light being or a spirit being. Your flesh is a spacesuit that makes you lawful in this realm or life. When you die physically, your spacesuit goes into the dirt and your spirit lives on. If the Creator is the Creator of all and we are within the all with dominion over all, then if our Heavenly Father is God and we are His children spiritually, then we are gods, not the God. Listen. I understand what you're trying to say in that the children of God should be considered to be gods, but we are not gods. So let me spell this out for you logically. First, we will all have a new body, albeit a spiritual body. However, both our current physical body and our future spiritual body are completely dependent upon the one and only true God for its existence and continuance. Second, 
There is absolutely no causal connection between your will and God's sovereignty. God's will be done, not yours. You can't even will yourself out of sleep without an external force causing you to wake up, and yet you would have the prideful arrogance to declare yourself a god <laughs> as you stub your toe and cry, what a puny god. No. Even the future spiritual body will not be able to will itself to cross the chasm between the righteous and the wicked. And if your will has no power apart from God, you are not a God. Third, you are a created being. Your very existence depends on the one true God. Though you might be a child of God through His grace, your eternity is dependent upon God, not your will. You cannot will yourself into existence or into eternal existence. Listen, something exists and owes its existence either to nothing or to something. Nothing cannot cause something. There is then a something or a someone which is either one or many. Hmm. But if many, the beings would be mutually dependent on another. They cannot be mutually dependent for their existence, though. Something cannot exist through a being on which it confers existence. Therefore, there must be one being through which all other beings exist. This being must exist through itself. Whatever exists through itself exists in the highest degree of all. Therefore, a supremely perfect being exists in the highest degree. Humans are possible beings whose essence is distinct from their existence. Human beings do not have to exist in fact, once they did not exist, for existence is not a part of their essence. Listen, you came into existence, uh, and rather late in the game, I might add. The first cause must be an essential being, whose essence is to exist. No being can produce itself. In order to cause its own existence, it would have to exist prior to its own existence. And possible beings are not possible unless there is a necessary being from whom they can receive existence. If a god exists and created the universe, this god would need to be an intelligent and necessary being who is all-powerful. The first cause of all producible beings must be one and not many because it is perfect in knowledge and there cannot be two beings that know everything perfectly, for one would know itself more completely than would the other. It is perfect in will, hence it loves itself more completely than it loves anything else, which means that the other infinite would be loved less than perfectly. It is infinitely good, and there cannot be two infinitely good beings, for then there would be more than an infinite good, and this is impossible since there cannot be more than the most. It is infinite in power. If there were two with infinite power, this would mean that there would be two total primary causes of the same effect, and this is impossible, since there cannot be two causes each doing all the causing. Absolute infinite cannot be excelled in perfection, since there cannot be more perfect than the wholly perfect. There cannot be two necessary beings, for to differ one would have to have some perfection the other lacked. And if there is no real difference, they do not really differ, they're one and the same. But whatever a necessary being has, it must have necessarily. Hence the one lacking what the other had necessarily would not be a necessary being. Omnipotent will cannot be in two beings, for then one could render impotent what the other wills omnipotently. Even if they agreed not to hinder each other, they would still be incompatible, for each would be the total primary and direct cause of any given thing that they agreed should exist. But an omnipotent cause must be the total primary and direct cause of what it wills. The cause agreeing to, but not directly willing, the effect would be only the indirect cause and hence not the direct omnipotent cause of the effect. Therefore, human beings, mere human beings, are possible beings whose essence is distinct from their existence and they are not gods. And fourth, if all created beings who are eternal are considered to be gods, well then you would have to consider angels to be gods as well. However, that is not only blasphemous, it's scripturally unsound. And finally, 
Based on your name, the person who wrote to me, Yeshua Melchizedek, you of all people should understand how dangerous your presented argument is for people trying to understand the Word of God. Your careless comment of we are gods is the slippery slope into new age nonsense. You need to repent and humble yourself before the Lord for your carelessness of leading people into pride. You are not a god, and you never will be. Don't ever utter such blasphemous, prideful nonsense out of your mouth again, please. You are an adopted child who has been grafted in. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. Do not be conceited, but fear. You can be cut off. Even if you mean well by your statement, it is careless and can lead many people to hell. We are not gods. Children of God will be eternal beings whose existence will still be dependent upon the one and only true God. No, we're not gods. Only God is to be worshipped, neither humans nor angels. We do not cause our life to be eternal, nor do we possess the power necessary to sustain it for all eternity. We are grafted in and grateful beings for the gift of eternal life through God's grace. We are not gods, though we are adopted children of God who have been given the gift of eternal life. And that should humble you, not puff you up with pride. We're not gods.